Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying the BPS DSET virtual conference this year. My name is David Price and I am a professional doctorate student in sport and exercise psychology at the University of Portsmouth. Now in my five minute challenge, I'm gonna to talk to you today about the opportunities and considerations of using media and technology in sports psychology service delivery. So without further ado, let's dive in. So in providing a backdrop to my talk, sports psychology is a changing landscape. And what we mean by that is that we as practitioners are required to evolve our practice and adapt to ensure that we deliver effective services. Now, this is largely influenced by the atypical working environments that practitioners operate in. And this could be the long working hours, different locations and time delays. But more recently, the COVID-19 pandemic has further accentuated this. And as practitioners, we have adapted to providing new innovative ways of working with our clients. And this produces a number of opportunities and considerations that we need to take into practice. So in terms of the evidence base available for sport and exercise psychology practitioners to immerse themselves in, we identified that there was actually a scarcity of research. And as such, myself, Dr. Chris Wagstaff and Richard Thurwell decided to delve into the online counselling literature to help inform best practice and mould it to the context for sport and exercise psychologists. And we identified six key themes that we would draw upon, namely the working alliance, accessibility, technological issues, anonymity and disinhibition, absence of verbal and non-verbal behaviours and time delays. And it would be beyond the scope of this presentation to discuss all of them, but I'm just gonna pay tribute to a couple of them right now. The first one being the working alliance. Now there's research to suggest that it is possible to foster a strong working alliance when working online. However, practitioners need to be aware of the mediating factors of anonymity and disinhibition and the absence of verbal and nonverbal behaviours that may play a role in limiting the effectiveness of the work and alliance. Now, if we turn our attention to the second theme of anonymity and disinhibition, it is quite possible that working online provides a natural sense of anonymity. And as a result, clients report feeling more comfortable, increased levels of psychological safety, reduced sense of vulnerability, and subsequently this will increase the rate of disclosure and can improve the work and alliance and subsequently effectiveness of the practitioner. If we now turn our attention to the third theme, and that is the absence of verbal and nonverbal behaviours, I think we can all agree that when working online, sometimes these verbal and nonverbal cues are often missed. And this can result in a misunderstanding or misinterpretation of information, which could subsequently impair the working alliance and reduce the effectiveness of service delivery. Now, we took all of this information and we wanted to provide practitioners with a number of recommendations of good practice and as such we identified a variety of recommendations these are just a few on the screen but I'm going to just touch upon a few of them now I'm going to start with the use of noise cancelling headphones but I'm going to draw your attention to the gif on the left and for those of you who are familiar with the Umbrella Academy from Netflix this is a, a character called Klaus who is using some noise cancelling headphones to block out the, the noise that is occurring in the house of a fight scene. Now, if we take that and position it into sport and exercise psychology, the use of noise cancelling headphones is really important in ensuring confidentiality and privacy, which are some of our ethical guidelines that we must abide by. The second recommendation of good practice would be to contingency plan. Technological issues will often arise and therefore we need to be prepared to offer alternative means of service delivery. And thirdly, and I would argue most importantly, the need to engage in self-care and take regular breaks. Now, for most of us, over the first lockdown, we experienced a number of online calls, whether that be Zoom, WebEx, and so forth. And it's really important that we plan and schedule breaks to ensure that we are engaging in self-care and looking after our own well-being. For interested readers and listeners, I encourage you to visit the journal Sports Psychology in Action to read our paper. 
I'm more than happy to share that through my um, social media and my email contacts below. I really value your, your thoughts and your opinions on this. And I thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the presentation.